Hello everybody. In today's talk, I would like to give you an overview of how genes are expressed and the two processes by which that occurs, which are called transcription and translation. So let's get started. The idea that information is contained in genes, that it flows into mRNA and then is made into a polypeptide, which then becomes a protein, is sometimes referred to as the central hypothesis of biology. Actually, when Crick made up this term, he called it the central dogma of biology, but he later admitted that he didn't know what the word dogma meant. And so a much better expression of this is the central hypothesis of biology. I'm not sure it deserves such a grandiose title, but you will hear that that's what's occurring. The idea is that information flows from gene to protein. In order to understand this, first I'm going to give you a wide-angle view of the two processes, and then we're going to go into each process in detail. Transcription is the synthesis of RNA using DNA as a template, and that's represented here. We have DNA, and then some segment of the DNA is transcribed into messenger RNA and we'll talk a little bit about how that's done later. Transcription often produces an mRNA, but there are other things that it can produce as well. Now you will notice in this slide, I have a prokaryotic cell up here and a eukaryotic cell down here. In a prokaryotic cell, transcription occurs and then the mRNA is immediately translated into a polypeptide. In the eukaryotic cell, it's a little more complex. After the mRNA is made in the eukaryotic cell, it must be processed. And we're going to talk more about that at the end of this unit. But it gets processed into a final mRNA. That mRNA then diffuses into the cytoplasm, where it is read by a ribosome in the process of translation, which is the synthesis of the polypeptide from the information contained in the messenger RNA. The base sequence in the mRNA determines the sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide. So that is the broad overview of transcription and translation and how the two processes differ in prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. I should also mention that ribosomes are the site at which translation happens but I think you probably already knew that. So transcription, the making of RNA from the template DNA. Translation, the making of a polypeptide, which is just a sequence of amino acids strung together in chain-like fashion from the mRNA transcript. It's important to know where each one takes place. Transcription happens in the nucleus, or if it's a prokaryotic cell in the nucleoid, and translation at the ribosome in the cytoplasm. Now let's talk for a second about RNA and how it differs from DNA. We can think of RNA as an intermediary between the information contained in DNA and the information contained in proteins. After the RNA is used, after it has been translated, it will be decomposed back into its RNA nucleotides and they will travel by diffusion back into the nucleus and will be used to make new types of RNA. RNA nucleotides are very similar to DNA nucleotides, but differ only in that their sugar is ribose instead of deoxyribose, and that's a very small chemical difference. Despite there being a small difference in the sugars, what it means is that RNA does not easily form a double helix structure, whereas DNA does. Here is a table that compares the differences between RNA and DNA. You will notice that DNA uses the bases A, T, G, and C, whereas RNA uses A, U, G, and C. And this should really say RNA, not just mRNA. It's all RNAs. DNA uses deoxyribose as the sugar. mRNA contains ribose. DNA is typically double-stranded and helical. mRNA is single-stranded. DNA is only found in the nucleus in eukaryotic cells whereas mRNA moves from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. DNA's primary role is the storage of information, whereas RNA's 
have many roles. They carry information from the transcribed genes. They're a component of ribosomes. They're the carrier of amino acids to the site of translation. They're important in editing the mRNA transcript, et cetera, et cetera. And the more research that is done, the more roles are found for different RNAs. And you'll learn about them in a more advanced biology class. As I said earlier, transcription produces several kinds of RNA, and we will learn about three of these in this unit because they all relate to translation. One of them is called messenger RNA, one of them is called ribosomal RNA, and one of them is called transfer RNA. Messenger RNA carries the information from the gene to the ribosome where translation will take place. Ribosomal RNA makes up the structure of the ribosome, and transfer RNA brings the appropriate amino acid to the ribosome for translation to occur. And we'll go into more detail about that in a while. There are other important RNAs, especially ones for processing the mRNA before it leaves the nucleus, and we will not learn much about them in this course, but you will learn about them when you take advanced biology. RNAs are made by an enzyme during transcription, and that enzyme is called RNA polymerase. And since you learned about DNA polymerase, you now can understand why it was called RNA polymerase. This is the enzyme that makes the RNA polymer, the RNA chain. It's important to mention a couple of things about the mRNA molecules that are made. First of all, the mRNA molecules that are made from the DNA are complementary to the DNA that produce them. And the other thing that I've already mentioned is mRNA uses uracil, where a thymine would be in DNA. Thus, U pairs with A in an mRNA. So what I want you to do now is draw the mRNA made from the following sequence of DNA. Stop the video and draw the mRNA. Okay, so what you should see is something like this. What you should have written is UGG. U, 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 G, G, C, U, C, A. Hopefully you got that and you understand why that's the mRNA made from the DNA sequence. Once the mRNA transcript is made and edited, it is shuttled off to the cytoplasm where it is translated into a polypeptide. Translation, as I've said, occurs on the ribosomes. Ribosomes are made of RNA, the so-called rRNA or the ribosomal RNA. This is the second type of RNA we have seen now. And the mRNA is read and the appropriate amino acid is added to the growing polypeptide chain. So that is an overview of transcription and translation. The next question we have is what does the genetic code look like? That is a question we will answer in the next video. That's it for today. So I hope what you understand now is what the process of transcription is, what the process of translation is, how these two processes occur in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Remember that in eukaryotic cells, the original mRNA transcript that is made must be edited before it is exported from the nucleus. And you should understand transcription takes place via an enzyme called RNA polymerase, which makes a complementary copy in RNA of a gene. And that translation occurs on a ribosome where the messenger RNA is read and translated into a chain of amino acids. We call it a polypeptide. Until next time, go outside, look at nature, ask biological questions, bring them back to class, and I'll see you soon.